What are the best life hacks for poor grab people? Please tell your doctor if your medications are too expensive. My parents worked themselves to the bone and we ate like sheet to help pay for medicine for me and my sister, hemophilia. We needed medicine to help clot during our group periods. They never complained and just worked. My mom didn't want anyone to know we were poor. There were cheaper alternatives. They could have saved thousands of dollars. I'm a family doctor now, and I make it a point to talk about medication costs and ask at all of my follow-ups if things are affordable. We don't know what your copay is, and it's not always easy to tell what will be covered on your plan. Please let us know if something is too much. This is what we are here for. Edited to add hey thanks stranger for the gold and silver. That's a first for me. To answer some recurring questions, I have hemophilia C, which I like to call the off-brand hemophilia, because it's quite different than the more common ones. It's autosomal recessive, both of my parents are carriers. My two boys are carriers and one is symptomatic. The medication was Amica Oral Solution. And as someone more eloquently describes in the comments below, prescribing the cheap medicine isn't always that simple. It depends on your insurance company, your deductible, which pharmacy you use. Yes that matters. Especially for psych meds. And if Jupiter is in line with Venus and the pharmacy god smiled down on us. For some people $50 a month is reasonable. And they would rather pay more for a long acting. And orthographiapal can only afford $5 a month. And are reusing supplies like lancets and catheters. I work in the US. If your medication is too expensive, and you have something other than Medicare or Medicaid try looking for manufacturer's coupons. Simpacort has a great one for one year no copays right now, and some of the newer long acting stimulants do too. Ask about local compounding pharmacies, mail order, 3 month supplier or off label dosing. Pharmacists look away. Like you can use eye drops in your ears for an acute bacterial infections and sometimes they are significantly cheaper. I've done that once, or twice when patients just didn't have the extra cachito get the one designated for your ears. If you need a procedure done, and have a residency program, or medical school local to you, see if they need any volunteers for didactics or demonstrations. We've done ingrown toenails, warts, skin lumps and bumps for free during lectures, to teach the other residents, how to do them. Two great sites, needy meds, or good recipe, com. To all my fellow college kids who use Chegg as a lifeline, but can't afford it, use TextSheet.com. Copy the URL of the block Chegg page and paste. Answer that you're under 13 on the survey, so they can't ask you anything else. And bam. An unlocked text of the problem solution. Eliminate food waste. Things you'd normally throw away like vegetable peelings and bones can be turned into flavorful stock for future meals. Something I do, is save bread ends and or pieces of bread that got squished, stale, or whatever, in a bag in the freezer. Once I collect a decent amount, I thaw them out, and make some homemade stuffing. It's super tasty, and feels fancy for just being bread, veggies, sage, and stock. Go to the library. Not only are there books there, but also you can check out video games, sewing machines, movies, museum passes so much more not to mention the software education and events that can help you get a raise promotion or better job libraries ducking rule i'm pretty comfortable financially but still use the library all the damn time mine even checks out wall art rich people throw out amazing stuff if you know someone with a truck you can go around the wealthy areas on garbage day and get all sorts of furniture appliances and clothing a little cleaning, and maybe a few minor repairs and you have lots of stuff to use or sell. Before I moved out the poor zone, I had 10 old computers I'd picked up off the roadside. Cobbling parts from one to another, I got 4 of them up and running. Sold one to a co-worker for $90. Cost to self, $0. Zero, zero. Edit, I didn't have a car at the time. I walked slash biked everywhere. Other edit, it wasn't a time consuming effort on the one I sold. Two parts swapped, some dirt slash dust removal, and probably the most time spent cleaning out the previous user's stuff. Maybe 40 to 50 minutes. $90 for less than an hour's effort? Okie doke. It still amazes me how quickly people toss out barely broken computers. 
A few years ago my brother was telling me about how his neighbors were throwing out their laptop because it made a strange noise and windows wouldn't boot. After a bit of back and forth of me asking questions about the laptop, I explained my theory and how it just needs a new hard drive. At that point my brother points to a laptop on the coffee table and says thought you'd say something like that. If you can fix it, you can have it. Woo. Free laptop. All it took was 10 minutes replacing the hard drive with a spare I had and a fresh windows install. If you wind up homeless, get a Planet Fitness Gym membership, $10 a month, so you can shower every day. The one near my work also has free Wi-Fi. Don't have kids. If you have access, ethnic grocery stores usually have cheaper produce. Can confirm. Local ethnic neighborhood grocery stores have prices much lower than the bigger supermarkets. I more or less only shop local anymore. Hot sauce is a simple investment to turn sad, bland food, into sad, slightly less bland food. Swing by a Taco Bell and you can get some for free. If you live close to one, Planet Fitness membership, $10 per month and the location near me does free pizza once per week, and free bagels once per week. That's 8 meals for $10. Plus you can save on your water, if you want by using their showers. Also when you're broke, it's hard to kill time, and not spend money. So go to the gym and use their Wi-Fi to watch shows, while you walk on a treadmill. It's honestly a great way to kill time. Congee with a broth cube, and leftover veggies and meat. When things are really tight, just rice, broth cube and water. 1 cup of rice with 6 to 8 cups of broth or water will stretch into several meals this way. It can be made really nutritious by adding more things, but when mun is tight this can satisfy your belly. Also, make use of all social services available to you. All of them. You're poor. These services exist to help you get by and make things easier. Apply for them. Even if you're 100% sure you don't qualify, you never know how else they might be able to help you. If you have pets, find charities on Facebook that help provide food for groupets to people with a low income. I can't tell you how much stress this took off my shoulders knowing I had enough kibble for my cats so they wouldn't starve and I could buy my own food instead. Don't be ashamed of being poor. I know people look down on you for that, but shame gets in the way of coping with poverty. Everybody can get poor at no fault of their own, if circumstances align right. Even if you made less than smart choices, got a drug habit, or whatever, you're not less deserving of basic human respect and kindness. Nobody is perfect, and poverty exists, because governments don't implement, or fund social services well, duck with minimum wage etc. Everybody deserves to live comfortably and not have to turn over every penny three times before spending it. No matter how much character that builds, poverty ducking sucks, and still come up short on basic necessities. You can donate plasma, and be paid $30. Up to 6 times a month. Extra $180. It is supposed to hurt a little. At Walmart or most grocery stores you can buy a rotisserie chicken for wicked cheap. They are actually cheaper to purchase cooked instead of raw, and you can make several meals out of just the meat you scrape off the bones. I often make sandwiches or apps and it'll typically last for like 6 meals, all for like 5 bucks. Then you get to use the carcass to make a stock. Manage every dollar you spend. Know exactly where your money is going. You can't reduce spending and save more if you don't understand where your money is going. There are a number of apps out there that help you budget and tell you what you're spending money on. Mint, Truebill, ETC. Once you see the breakdown, you might notice that you're spending more on meals than you should. Or you had that subscription you forgot about that suddenly took $25 out of your account. Remember, being poor and being constantly broke aren't always the same thing. Sometimes you're just bad with money. Not sure it's a hack, but never ever let anyone or anything convince you that you're any less of a human being because of your shitty financial situation. Pop an egg into your ramen. Simple, cheap, and improves the taste a lot. Scramble or fry an egg and put on rice, boiled but preferably fried rice. Whisk an egg and add to canned corned beef when cooking it in a pan. Soft boil an egg and have with toast soldiers. Cut toast into thin strips, dip them in and eat. Learn to poach eggs and pop them on top of food like rice. 
beans and less that you go through. Good damn it I'm hungry now. Shop at Goodwill slash secondhand stores. So, in my area, boneless chicken breasts cost at least $10 for two. A whole chicken costs about $10 or less if it's on sale. I learned from Yatab how to dress, cut up, a chicken. So now I get two boneless breasts, two boneless thighs, two drummers and two wings for the price of two breasts. Also you use the carcass and the bits of meat attached to it to make soup. Buy the store version, Acker imitation brand, version of things. Cheaper and it works the exact same save for a few exceptions. Supercook. Com has a recipe generator that will help you make good meals with whatever you have at home. Best thing ever. Went from boring basic meals to actual tasty meals edit. Thank you for the gold kind people thank you for the silver kind people you all have made my week with the comments and the golds and silvers also. If you're low on supplies there are places to call. Like the society of Saint Vincent du Paul. They give hampers and don't push the religion on you. They just help you out with a hamper. Where I'm from in Canada a hamper usually refers to a big box or a bunch of bags of free food. We don't call our laundry hampers, hampers. We call them laundry baskets. Just how I've always heard it. I'm not sure if it's okay, but there is an amazing post in r slash poverty finance where someone compiled a list of resources to draw on to help out those in various stages of need. It is a long post, but well worth the read. Drink only water. It's one of those ripple effect things that improves every other area of your life. I work in a welfare office. The number of people who are both 1, unable to afford proper nutrition, supposedly, and 2, morbidly obese is counterintuitive until you see the enormous sodas so many people travel with. It's incredibly easy to drink more calories than you think you're drinking, and the fattening nature of these drinks is all in the sugar content. Switch to carrying water instead of soda or other sweetened beverages and I assure you the following will happen 1. You will save more money than you imagine. 2. You will sleep better. 3. Food will taste better. 4. You will have more consistent energy throughout the day. 5. Your skin slash overall appearance will improve. And 6. You will lose weight. If you do nothing other than stop spending money on soda slash sweet tea slash etc and just drink filtered tap water, you will thank yourself. Source, was poor, now I'm not poor. Still drink only water, and unsweetened coffee. I'm over 40 pounds lighter, sleep well, and feel better. When buying something, that you expect to last, buy the cheapest version of it that makes sense. If it doesn't break and lasts forever, awesome. If it does break though, go out and buy the best quality one you can. If you broke the cheap one once chances are you'll break the cheap one over and over again so spending a bit more now will save future you from having to spend more money down the road. This is especially good advice with tools. Use coupons. I started doing this when I was making 8 bucks an hour and still do it today. Take some time to add coupons to your account for grocery stores that do them online. Take some time to clip them from junk mail you get. In the average grocery trip, I still save between 30-40%. You don't have to be an extreme couponer or crazy person to save a lot of money. What's the real secret here? I feel like every coupon I see is for 10 cents off some product I never wanted to buy in the first place. It's like 30 cents off salad dressing when you buy two. I don't see how that ever adds up to a significant amount off the bill. Am I doing it wrong? I have an app that tells me when things are on sale slash when coupons pop up. Then when I find ones that interest me, or I may need them in the future, I go ahead and buy them. For example, if the app tells me there's a $4.00 coupon for razors, I'll go ahead and buy them, because I'll need them eventually. Edit. It's called Crazy Coupon Lady.